So you're finally ready to do what it takes to lose that stubborn belly fat of yours. And I'm here to help you. First though, let's determine how long it'll take you to do so. What I want you to do is first find out which one of these six photos best represents your current body fat percentage and where you're at right now. Now in order to successfully strip off that stubborn belly fat, you're going to have to get down to ideally around 10% body fat or so. And by using what we know is the optimal rate of fat loss to shoot for, we can get a rough estimate shown here of how long this process will take you to do based on where you're at right now and assuming that you stay consistent with the right approach week after week. Now for a lot of you, this may come as a surprise and is likely a lot longer than what you expected. Because most of us, and myself included, obviously want to lose that stubborn belly fat as soon as possible. But what most people are unaware of is that there's actually a physiological catch with belly fat that explains why it's so hard to lose when compared to other areas and explains why you may not be seeing any actual improvement in your belly fat despite your efforts. And this has to do with two main reasons, with the first and primary reason being that when compared to other areas of your body, stubborn areas like your belly fat actually consist of a greater amount of a certain type of fat cell that's very resistant to mobilization and a lot more difficult to burn off. And secondly, the subcutaneous fat covering your abdominal area also receives significantly less blood flow than other parts of your body do. And this makes things more difficult because the less blood flow an area of your body receives, the more difficult it becomes to mobilize and burn off the fat from that area and these two reasons are why your belly fat is so difficult to lose and it's why certain areas of your body like your face your chest and your arms are going to tone up quickly while more stubborn areas like your belly fat just seems to remain unchanged the good news however is that losing your belly fat is not impossible it's just that most people screw up the process before fat loss can even reach that region but today i'll clear it all up for you with a three-step protocol that you can use to both lose that stubborn belly fat for good and potentially speed up the process at which you lose fat from that region. Now the first step is something that most of you are probably familiar with but it's hands down going to be the most important step because in order to lose fat from anywhere you need to be in a calorie deficit and your belly fat is no different as it's governed by the same principle and there's no break in the law of physics here. So to start out you need to be eating at a calorie deficit and combining this with regular weightlifting for the best results. And to help you out with this, I've compiled basically a starter kit of my past videos in the description box down below of how to set up your calorie deficit as well as links to my free workouts that you can get started with and use right away. Now although this is what's going to set up the foundation to enable you to burn off fat in the first place, your belly fat in particular is where things get a little trickier and is where the next two steps become crucial. So the next step has to do with actually mobilizing your belly fat such that you can start losing fat from that area. But the only way to do this, and is where most people fail with the process, is by adhering to step one, a calorie deficit for long enough until fat loss starts to finally come off from your belly. Because remember, your body is gonna prioritize losing fat in other areas like your chest, your arms, and your face before it eventually moves on to your belly fat since these other areas are much easier for your body to burn off and use for energy. Sadly though, what happens with most people is they'll implement step one, but then after a month or two of this, they see no discernible change in their belly fat, and as a result, decide to try a new diet, for example, or just quit altogether since it doesn't seem to be working for them. But the reality is that they haven't stuck to the plan long enough for the fat loss to even have a chance of reaching their belly fat in the first place. Take a look at Dylan here, for example, who's a member of one of my Build Science programs. As you can see, he was able to successfully lean down and strip off a lot of his initial belly fat. But let's take a closer look at his start and his month two photo, for example. So imagine if after two months, you were to look at these two photos of yourself. You'd probably say to yourself that your belly fat hasn't really changed at all, the plan just isn't really working, and you likely quit altogether as a result. But what you have to realize is that although there may not have been much change in Dylan's belly fat, if you look closely at other regions like his chest, his arms, and his face, you can clearly see fat loss occurring in those areas. And by Dylan refusing to quit and instead sticking to his plan just a little bit longer, he was finally able to see more and more of the fat loss occurring from his belly. But had he quit two months in, based on what he saw, 
he would have never given his body the opportunity to eventually mobilize more and more of the stubborn belly fat from his belly and drastically transform his physique as a result. Meaning that you need to ride out the calorie deficit for long enough such that your body has stripped off enough fat from other areas and now needs to rely more on burning off your belly fat for fuel. And in fact, what's really interesting is that multiple papers have indicated that there seems to be an inverse relationship between your body fat percentage and your abdominal blood flow. And as a result of this, leaner individuals actually exhibit significantly greater blood flow to their belly fat than less lean individuals do. Simply meaning that as you gradually strip off more and more fat from other areas of your body and get leaner, your body will actually start redirecting more and more blood flow to your belly fat so that I can start prioritizing and using that for energy, which is just more reason why you need to ride out that calorie deficit for long enough since the process of you losing your belly fat is going to naturally speed up every step of the way as your body begins to prioritize that area more and more. Now despite belly fat being so stubborn, there are a couple things that you can try out to potentially speed up the process. First, you want to ensure that you're regularly performing abs exercises and getting stronger with them over time. Because although we know based on a quick look at the research that this isn't going to directly reduce your belly fat, what it can do is actually build up your abs such that they become more visible even at a higher body fat percentage. A 2017 paper, for example, tested this and they found that after 10 weeks of abdominal training, subjects were able to significantly increase the thickness of each portion of their their abs, which in theory would mean that you just wouldn't have to get as lean to get your six pack to really pop through that belly fat the way you want it to. So what I'd recommend is to simply incorporate various weighted abs exercises into your weekly routine and overload them with weight over time just like you would any other muscle in order to grow them. And I do have a video on this which I'm just going to link down below. In addition to this though, a recent 2017 paper has suggested that you can even take this a step further and potentially spot reduce fat from your belly. The theory was that since we know that fat mobilization is decreased when there's poor blood flow to that region, what you can do is exercise the muscles surrounding that specific region to first increase the blood flow there and then follow this up with low intensity cardio which predominantly uses fat for fuel to then burn off the fat that's been mobilized from that area. So they put this theory to test by having two groups perform either an upper body workout or a lower body workout followed by 30 minutes of low intensity cycling for three days per week for 12 weeks. What they found is that although both groups ended up losing the same amount of total fat, the upper body group lost significantly more upper body fat and the opposite was true for the lower body group. Now, although this has yet to be replicated and was done on a small sample size, it was nonetheless a very well-run study and it does indicate that spot reduction may indeed be possible. And in theory, applying this to your belly fat, you could, for example, perform an ab workout to first increase the blood flow and the fat mobilization from that region and then follow that up with 30 minutes or so of low intensity cardio to then selectively burn off the fat that's been mobilized. But all in all, I wouldn't get too excited over this it does make for a good experiment to at least try out and it does have some merit but at the end of the day steps one and two need to be where you put most of your focus and effort because it's been proven time and time again in the literature and in my experience that by applying those two steps alone your stubborn belly fat will eventually be mobilized and burned off so put your focus there and then use step three once you have that down to potentially speed up the process and for a step-by-step -step program that puts this all together for you such that you know exactly how to train and what to eat week after week to lean down and strip off fat as quickly as possible just like Dylan and several other members have done with their Built With Science programs then simply head on over to builtwithscience.com and take the analysis quiz to discover what program is best for you and your specific situation. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Please show your support by giving the video a like, leaving a comment down below as to what you'd like to see me cover next, subscribe to the channel, and turning on notifications for the channel as well as this all really does help me out. Thank you all so much for the continued support. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.